Thank you very much. Uh, we'll read the scriptures, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. I'll read. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from the Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chair, reading, re in his chair, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desire, desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture he, which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his sharer, so opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of, his, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and, bat and he baptized him. And when they were coming up, come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came unto Caesarea. When we read the Bible, the heart of God is in the scriptures. We can see how God leads us. And also what you can see when you read the Bible Satan, you can see how Satan leads us. Satan leaves us numb to sin little by little. And one day you'll find out yourself that you're deep in sin. And is your deep in sin. So even though you have received the same forgiveness of sin, Though there are brothers and sisters whose faith grows little by little and become people of faith, however, there are brothers and sisters who become far away from Jesus. And in certain, certain circumstances, they, forgive, they have received forgiveness of sin. However, they are not led and guided by the Holy Spirit and dragged by the spirit of evil and sin. Judas the Iscariot, he was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. He did not follow Jesus because of wealth, well, because Jesus did not have any fortune. Judas the Iscariot, he was in charge he was in charge of all the money. He was the treasury of Jesus. And little by little, he took some of the money that Jesus had. And step by step, he became a person who betrayed and sold Jesus for money, for silver. So as you live spiritual life, there is the guidance of the Holy Ghost. And on the opposite side there are works of Satan 
So when you become far away from the church and God, then your heart goes little by little toward the world. Then there are people who follow away the path of sin. And there are people who rejoice and are joyful inside of the church and they walk the path of the Lord. And I often tell you this, and the memories of when I had military training is so vivid. And there were um, some, some friends and I were walk, walking, and then we saluted the commander. And, we sh and everybody should salute the commander, right? And the commander was walking by, and then he said, Hey, you soldiers, come here. And they, you have the deputy officer, and the hey, officer. Hey, they are uh, trainees. Can you reward them? Uh, and the officer said, yes, of course, Commander. Of course, sir. Hey, they, they saluted so well. We should uh, reward them. Well, you should salute your senior officers, right? But the Commander, he, he rewarded us. And um, my friends and I, we, we laughed so hard. There was a there was a whole the whole troop gathered and then we were receiving the re reward and there were so many good words. Uh, he was so loyal. He was um showed loyalty and patriotism. And then they gave us some day off. And one day I was um watching I was on guard duty. And I was I'm. I had my so my gun. I was wearing my helmet. And it was on the guard post. Was on the top of the mountain. There was no one there. And later, I was I was reading the Bible, and then I was deep in them. I put on my gun, then I sat down. Well, I'm not sure. I'm so I'm not supposed to do this, but I read the Bible. And then I heard someone coming, and then there was the commander coming, and then I put down the Bible and I said, "Salute!" I saluted him. I said, "Guard duty." And the commander told me, "He said, if you're when you're on religious duty, do your religion work, and then you're guard duty, do your guard." So that was the second time. I met the uh, commander, and, and one day, it was on Sunday, and then I was um, preaching the sermon, and then I saw the door open, that the commander walking in, and the commander said, hey, do your uh, religious work. So uh, there was a colonel, and then I was, uh, I was a private, and then I, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't really finish the sermon, and then I finished the sermon, and the commander came up and he said, can I, can I say a few words? So, said, of course, sir. And then we sat down and the commander said, he told us about the, the Battle of Bengmagoji during the, the Korean Civil War. And then he told his story and he, he was the, um, the company commander at that time. And he took over the highlands with the least sacrifices and casualty. And he, he realized the power of religion that time. And then he came to the, um, the training troop. And then the, he, he, he saw there was no chapel. He saw there was no religion going on. So he felt that he should have a religion. And then he figured out that we were doing religious work. So with, with the commander, we built the chapel there, chapel building. So, so we gathered some bricks, and then we borrowed some um, wood from other troops. And even though it was not perfect, we built a chapel building. And the commander was so pleased to see the building. I, 
I could see that God was helping me in all aspects and was so amazing. So think about this. So in the book of Acts, there was there was persecution going on. Uh, however, there was So Philip was going down to Gaza and he saw a eunuch of Ethiopia. He, he, he was the charge of the treasury. So this eunuch was uh, of great authority. And this this eunuch was reading the Bible and he was in, while he was in the chariot. And the angel of the Lord said, and the spirit said to Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran to him and he heard him read the prophet and he said, understand that thou what thou readest. And the eunuch said, how can I accept some man should guide me? So come, come on to the chariot, he asked Philip and Philip got up. And what the eunuch was reading was about how Jesus was crucified. And it was, a, it was a prophecy of Isaiah. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his sharer, so opened he not his mouth. This was Jesus Christ being crucified on the cross. The eunuch said, uh, I, have, I, I don't get this thing. So whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Well, we know all what the answer is, right? It's Jesus, right? And this eunuch, this, this whole thing was, he was so prepared to listen to the gospel. Who is this? Oh, this is Jesus. Didn't you hear the news? Jesus was crucified on the cross. Jesus took away all our sins. And the eunuch received salvation. He was so pleased. And as they all went their way, they saw, came unto a certain water. Can I be baptized? And then he was baptized. The eunuch went away and he went back to Ethiopia and then he, I went to Ethiopia it was there are so much work of the gospel there and they're a country of great faith I went to Ethiopia and then lectured in many university I lectured to many pastors and they're so sincere in front of the gospel last year I went to Ethiopia and then there was a university at contest and then we we supported them we support the Ethiopian government and the university, and they are so thankful. And, and there was a dining event prepared by the minister. So even though I cannot preach the gospel really well, but Jesus was with, with me, by my side. Well, when my daughter, he, when she, she learned to drive, I was sitting by in the passenger seat and then I taught her. I said, slow down when you're having a left turn, turn the handle slightly. I, I told her about this. When you first drive, uh, you, you're very nervous, but w when I was sitting in the passenger seat, it's very um, secure. So just like that, when we preach the gospel, when Jesus is with us by our side, it's so amazing how he works. So when I was in Ethiopia, the dean of university called me. I passed the park. I heard you, you came to Ethiopia. So if I go to Addis Ababa, it takes about 13 hours. I really, really want to meet you. If uh, can I visit you? Can you can you have a meeting, please? I say I come and we can have a meeting. 
So this this was the dean of university, and then I sat down, I talked with him, I had a conversation. I told him to open up Romans chapter three, verse twenty-three, and then and he said, "Oh, I I memorized this verse." So for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I told them to re read verse 24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. What he said is that if you pray really hard, you become righteous. Hey, why don't you read more carefully, sir? Say, if you're loyal, you become justified. And I told him that we are justified freely, and he was so surprised. So even though you read the same words, because the evil spirit is working inside his heart, it looks differently. In Romans chapter 3, uh, in verse 10, it said, there is none righteous, no one, not one. Uh, and verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So everyone has sinned. However, in verse 24, it shows how the sinner becomes justified. When I speak about this, people are surprised. People, people think we have to do this and that, do this and this to become justified. You have to go to church on Sunday, you have to do good deeds, you have to pray, you have to repent. People think you have to do all these things. Nowhere in the Bible that it speaks about what we have to do to become righteous and just. And sometimes, often, I, I get on the airplane, and there's, there's small airplanes, about um, 10 seats. And then there are sometimes I sit on the, I sit on the very front seat. There is, there are some airplanes that has two, two handles. So I, I sit on the driving seat. If I pull on the stick and uh, if, I pu if I push some levers, the plane will crash, right? So there, there's a pilot sitting next to me, so I let the pilot drive and I don't touch anything, right? So being justified and washing away your sin, it's just like that. Humans cannot do this, so humans is is not able that is why Jesus washed away our sins for us no one can wash away their own sins by their own deeds if we could God would have guided us step by step in the Bible however God did not tell us how to wash our sins Instead, He sent us Jesus. Amen? Our diligence, our efforts are none and Jesus works. So this eunuch, how, he, how did he receive salvation? He was in his chariot and then he was reading the scriptures and he didn't know what this meant and Philip came along. And this chariot was running, and, and Philip came running, and he said, Understandeth thou what thou readest? And Philip, and, and the eunuch saw him. He could have just ignored him. However, this eunuch was so curious about the Bible, the scripture. So, have anyone been curious about what the Bible meant? That's a very good attitude so when when you're curious about the, the meaning of the Bible then the work begins from there so this eunuch he was um, going going back from Jerusalem 
and he was reading the scriptures and he didn't know what this meant and then God sent Philip there so this is how God works it's amazing right so as I live my life I have experienced many times how God works like this also in my life so there was one time I, I was living in Tegu and I, ca I came to Seoul for business and then I was going back to Tegu and then I was about in my mid 30s and then there was an old man about his, about his 60s sitting on, on the bus and I was uh, I, we started uh, having a conversation and then he was a principal of, of a school in Tegu it was uh, and the conversation was so fun And then I, I turned a little bit and then we talked about the Bible. And then as soon as I talked about the Bible, he turned his head toward the window and then he came, came back. So you didn't have a remote control to turn him back. So that meant that he didn't want to listen about the spiritual life. So I didn't have anything to say, so I was just... um looking forward and then we were passing by the arrest area and there was we were entering into a tunnel and the entrance of a tunnel there's a big a big river and the tire the the front tire exploded there and the car was tilting so if you if we fall it's it's a it's a few hundred meters uh, of the cliff so uh, without without conscious i i covered the head of the principal sitting next to me so we were so close to falling but we didn't and people were screaming and then we were looking and we fixed the tire and then we, we got on we got on the road and then the principal asked me hey pastor why did you cover my head well i wasn't really thinking well you're 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 the principal and you have much work to do but if we fall and we we shouldn't and if i just covered you and then he said what about what about your head? What about your injuries? And he was so touched that he, that I didn't look after myself and covered him first. And his head came back. And then as we went to Daegu, I preached the gospel to him. So when we were getting off at Daegu, I told him that I want to give give a lecture in front of the, um, in front of the students. So I went to his school, and there were about a thousand students. And I preached the gospel to the students, and then we had an opportunity like that. And people, well, their hearts lies. Even though they know the facts that Jesus has been crucified on the cross, all oh, that's very thankful. And then they just don't really pay close attention to it. However, if you're deep in sin and you fall into guilt, and then when you hear the news that Jesus has died on the cross, and if you take one step further, When you get to the point that Jesus has take took care of my sins, then it's not just being thankful. When you get to the point, when your heart gets to the point where Jesus Christ has actually died for me, then in your heart, your heart will be connected with Jesus Christ and you become thankful you have joy inside of your heart. 
So when you have those hearts in your heart, you can fight away temptation, you can fight away, come over pain, agony, and sadness. So last night, uh, we were at a concert, and then we were talking about the Merchant of Venice. There was a person named Antonio, and then there was Shylock. Shylock was an evil Jew, and he was a very greedy person. And Antonio, he was a, a well-respected figure. So Antonio borrowed some money from Shylock, and then they, they wrote a contract. I will pay back by a by, um, certain date. Well, Shylock said, if you don't pay me back by this time, let's let's write down for fun. We will I will take about take away one pound of the muscle that is closest to the to the heart. So Antonio and Shylock signed the contract, but Antonio did could not pay him back on time. So Shylock took that document and he went to court. So he went in front of the judge and said, Hey, Mr. Judge, I want to execute the words as written on this contract. So if you take the muscle that is closest to the heart, then you will die, right? It was the, it was the news of the day in Venice. And people say, I will pay him back for Antonio. Don't, don't kill him. And Shylock said, no, I will just do as this is written on the contract. So they went to court, and Shylock, he was uh, sharpening his knife, and Antonio stood in front of the people. And there, was the, uh, there was a big audience, and then the ruling started. Antonio, is this your signature? Yes, judge, that is my signature. Then I allow Shylock to execute as this word. Shylock, I grant ye thee to take away one pound of the muscle of Antonio's heart. So Antonio, unbutton your shirt and reveal your chest. So he took off his clothes, and Shylock was coming with his knife on his on his hand. And the judge said, "Hey, wait a minute." Shylock, do you have a measure with you? So Shylock said, "No. On this contract, it said, is a one pound of a muscle. So without a measure, how can you measure? Oh, how can you know?" that you cut away one pound of muscle. It will not be more or short of one pound. And Shylock was hesitating because he didn't know. And also he said, Shylock, listen. On this document, there is not a word about, any. there's not anything about blood. So as you cut one pound of the muscle, you shall not shed any blood. If Antonio sheds blood and he dies because of that, you will be punished for that. So Shylock wanted to kill away Antonio, but he He stopped, and judge said, Shylock, listen, in the law of Venetia, if there is anyone who is trying to harm the citizen of Venice, he should be punished heavily. And Shylock, you try to harm Antonio, the citizen of Venice, so you shall be punished heavily. And this 
this is one part of Merchant of Venice, which Shakespeare wrote. Well, Shakespeare is the author of the story, so he's, he's a very clev clever man. So I was reading. this book and Antonio was saved by the judge I have read a similar story in John chapter 8 about a, a woman who was caught in adultery she was supposed to be stoned to death Well, the story goes, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Well, Antonio was supposed to be killed, but he was saved by the wisdom of the judge, just like that the woman who was caught in adultery was supposed to be stoned to death. However, because of Jesus, Jesus is ruling, she was saved. The woman received forgiveness of sin. And her heart was filled with joy and gratefulness. So when I was reading the Bible, the woman who wasn't caught in adultery was me. I have sinned. I was supposed to be cursed and then I was a filthy man who was supposed to be stoned to death. However, Jesus saved me from that position. And the woman who was caught in adultery, how she was filled with joy and gratefulness, and that same joy was inside my heart, and it, it, it made me joyful, and it made me shed tears in front of God. And as I preach the gospel, and then preaching the gospel itself is so thankful because when I preach the gospel, just like the uh, woman who was caught in adultery, just like the woman who was caught in adultery and, and preaching the good news about Jesus, I was so happy to spread the news about gospel. I often tell people, the happiest occupation, the happiest job is a pastor. So as I started to begin, began to preach the gospel, numerous people were saved and their life changed. And all these memories are filled in my life. And I can talk about the stories of joy all night long and there is no joy in this world that can comprehend and this is joy that wouldn't just vanish that keeps flowing up in my heart so in, in Mexico at this time we had a Christian Leaders Fellowship meeting in Mexico. And then there is a pastor's gathering in Mexico, and Pastor Shin, Missionary Shin, he, he went there to preach the gospel. And there are about 300 pastors there, and they all received salvation. I was so thankful. Not long ago, this person's uh, older sister called me. Hey, Pastor, uh, my, my younger brother is, is, is in trouble. How can you meet him for just one time? But her brother didn't want to meet me. So uh, what can I do for you? And then, and then she said, I'll, I'll bring him to church. So she brought 
him to church. So this brother, he he was he was he fell into gambling, and he his money ran out. He blew away all his fortune. Then he had some debt, and then he forged some money from his company. And then he lost that all of that in gambling too. And then he he was in the states, and then he came to Korea. And he was planning to go go back to the states. Well, I had a friend who was in exile like that. Well, one of my friends, he. He established a, a construction company. He was building apartment buildings in Gumi. He was in the middle of the uh, mountain, and the scenery was so beautiful. And he he built a beautiful apartment. But the the people in Gumi, because it's so, they they preferred the. Uh, the uh, building close to the city, so his uh, his building. There were no no one who was coming into the building, so he filed for bankruptcy. So if he goes to trial. So he thought he would be sentenced maybe six years in prison. So he he decided to go in exile and run away for six years until this uh, expires. And it was so so painful because his daughter was marrying during during that time, and he couldn't even attend his daughter's. Daughter's wedding, and then one day he was all he was getting almost caught, getting caught, and then he he went to the building um bathroom, and then he just locked the door inside. And then all that anxiety, and then and the insecurity. And he was so painful because of that. So he was sleeping one day, and then he he passed away. So his daughter called me. Then, and then there was the, the police came in. And then we had a funeral, and then I, I saw how my friend suffered from from running away. He was always in a hurry, and he was so uh, always anxious and nervous. Because I know how it feels, I told this bro brother, "Hey, brother, do not run away. You have to pay it back anyways, so turn yourself in." So I read the verse of Second Kings, chapter sixteen. And this brother, he he accepted those words by faith, and then he went to court, and he was uh, sentenced one year and six months. And I received a letter 
And then he's, he's getting used to the life in prison. And he somehow became in charge of the cell. And he's taking care of the prisoners in the cell. One day, the, a person, a person who believed in Jesus, came, and he said, "Hey, um, hey, why don't we have a Sunday service? And why don't you preach the word?" And last week they had the first um, service there, and they were so touched. At first, he was worried how he would live one year and six years in prison. When you're six months in prison, but he said he was so thankful that he's in there. When I listen to his stories, it's so heartwarming. Uh, let me read the read the uh, the letter for you. I have not seen any man who was in prison who is as peaceful as he is. I'm sorry, I, I have to put on my glasses to see the little words. What this brother said is written here. It's been six weeks and uh, I'm getting used to this. And I feel, I feel and experience every day that nothing is a problem. He's the happiest man in this prison. Well, you have, maybe, Pastor, you have heard, but I was um, persecuted three years, but sentenced one and a half years. And there was fear and expectations at the same time how God lead will be. And a pastor came to and he, he said for me to pray and he, he gave us some words. And I have and it seemed, seemed impossible But just like how, how faith and then I was I was in courts believing in God and believing in the promise of God so no matter what the result came out I, I could accept it because God is good And I was I was sentenced one year and six months. And I came into prison. On the way back, I was a, a bit disappointed because of one year and six months would would be what seem what seemed so long. However, this disappointment did not dwell in my heart very long for a long time. Because I was, uh, I became the ch in charge of the prison cell. So I had um, responsibilities and duties here. But normally, uh, in, in order to be in charge, you have to be in prison very long. But however, I was, I was voted as a cell. How, and how Joseph, he was in prison, but he was used by God to do God's works in Egypt. And there are people reading your uh, pastor's books, so 
I decided to preach the gospel to them. And there are, there are people who ask me who want to come to the church when they come out. And I realized that God wanted me to preach the gospel to the people in my cell. And I could see that the people were listening to me. And we were talking, talking uh, about, uh, talk, we were having a conversation with a person in, in my cell, and then he, he told me that we should do a Bible seminar, a Bible study every Sunday, and I should lead the Bible study. And he, he offered me to lead the Bible study. So I could see that God was leading me. And then last Sunday, we had our first meeting in the cell. And I asked the person to pray. And then we, we sang hymns. And we have shared the words. And we prayed and then finished the study. Especially, I preached about the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 and how this prodigal son, when he was connected with the father's heart, the son's problem was not a problem anymore. And people were so touched and said, this, this seemed like their own stories. Pastor, these uh, Sunday, Sunday services are, are a hope to my heart. What's so amazing is, no matter what kind of circumstances we are, when we match our hearts to God, God does not neglect us and He always catches our hands. So if this brother, if he ran away, he, he changed his heart with the, Bible, with the word of the Bible, and he turned himself in. But now he's preaching the gospel. And after he's done, he's doing his um, sentence and he comes out of prison, he will become a good servant of God. So no matter where you are, you take the way normal people do not open up their hearts to God and they do not connect their hearts to God. So when you go into prison for the first time, oh, I committed a forgery. I I had I embezzled money. And he knew that he would have to take sentence. However, this brother had a heart looking toward God. And inside, even he, his body is inside the prison. His heart is filled with joy and gratefulness. So your heart is all pointing towards the worldly needs and worldly desires, but you you do not look toward God. F Philip, he was not a special, a powerful servant of God. He was a deacon. When he was in Samaria, the, the whole castle received salvation. And he was preaching the gospel. And then the angel of God told him to go to Gaza. And then he, Philip ran. 
and there was a chariot there it, Philip ran and went toward the chariot at that time it was not a very very light book like this it was a whole book of scriptures and then this eunuch was great of great authority was reading the scriptures Philip went the understandeth thou what thou readest and the eunuch said how can I accept some man should guide me so this Bible So when you look with the perspective of God's Spirit, it's so easy. But without it, you cannot understand the word in the Bible. That this eunuch was reading the Bible, he was reading the scriptures, and he could not understand anything. So he asked, who, who is this man the prophecy the prophet speaketh is it himself or some other man who is this for Philip it was so easy because it's Jesus so this this happened right after Jesus was crucified so Philip introduced Jesus so Philip preached the gospel there and the eunuch we see the salvation in the chariot. Just like the, the principal I talked about. He's, a, he's an educational leader. He, he didn't have any interest in Jesus. However, because, because of the accident that happened, and then I covered um, the principal's head, because of that, he asked me, Seriously, why did you cover cover my head? I hey, Mr. Principal, you're an educational leader. You're a very ba valuable person. He's, he told me, what about your your body? Now, I didn't think about it. I didn't have time to think about me. The principal opened up his heart toward me. And then I preached the gospel on the way back to Tegu. And we, beca we became so close friends. So when I get on the car, when I get on the airplane, I see that God works wherever I go. However, our hearts are pointing towards the world. It's pointing toward the flesh. Normal people are, are, are involved in fraud. Because they say they will pay you back. And they pay you back a lot. They think about what they will do with all that money. So when you pass that phase, They don't think about why would they pay me so much with high interest. But when they go to a bank, you can get a loan at 4% interest. Why would they come to me? Oh, this person cannot borrow any money from the bank. Then a smart person thinks uh, high interest means high risk. Why would a company, what a normal company cannot borrow any money from the bank? Because there are some pro troubles there. So when we, when we build church buildings, they, because we have such high credit, the bank, bank want us to borrow as much as money as we can. So people's hearts, they're captured by greed. They just look at the interest. 
and people are deceived because they think, oh, if I receive interest with all that money, I'll do this and that. And then they just loan the money and then they receive interest for one or two months and then their money's gone. So just like that, when we encounter those things and if we can connect to Jesus, I mean, Philip, he, he was uh, from a very suburb area. So it, was, it would have been the first time Philip saw this chariot. And the eunuch asked him of whom speak of, of prophet this, himself or some other man. And many people you will be able to preach the gospel and then he will receive salvation and then one and one there will, there will be many people who will receive salvation and when you receive that grace gratefulness and thankfulness will fill your heart the president of Ghana before he passed away he called me so I went there to visit him the president was very ill The, the president said the doctors come and they I, have, I go through tre treatment but I become more ill every day so I cannot so even though I'm a president when I stand in front of God I have sin I'm so scared to go in front of Jesus with sin in my heart there are 10,000 pastors in Ghana. But God connected me to the president of Ghana and made me to preach the gospel. I preached the gospel to the president. The Ghana president received salvation. Oh, I am righteous. Jesus washed my sins. I am holy. He, he gave his testimony. We were so grateful. So there are so many people who, who have received the gospel. This person, that person. In that precious work of gospel, God took me, such a worthless person. And I did not do anything good. I was, connect, I was just connected to God and our hearts were unified and God works in my life every day uh, last night there, uh, there was a couple that came I told them you should, preach, you should believe Jesus and you should come to our church and the wife says oh we go to church every Sunday well, you shouldn't just go to church. You should have forgiveness of sin. If you don't receive the forgiveness of sin, so we didn't have much time last night, so we didn't have time to talk long. But you have, I have... I had sin in my heart, but after I received forgiveness of sin, God worked inside of me. Mrs., even though you go to church, if you don't receive forgiveness of sin, you cannot go to heaven. We didn't have time, so we stopped there. However, if I meet people, There is the truth of Jesus lies with him. And just like God sent Philip to meet the eunuch of Ethiopia, 
Uh, there was a there was a work of gospel in Samaria, and Philip said, "God, God sent Philip to Gaza," and Philip ran to the chariot. And then the eunuch was reading the scriptures, and understandeth thou what thou readest? And the eunuch offered them to come to the chariot, and then inside the chariot. The eunuch receives salvation. It's so amazing. If you, if you match your heart with God, if you become one with God, the people there, are, there are so many people around you, and there are so many people in soul that has to be saved. Even though you're not very good at it, preach the gospel. God will help you. If there's one and two. And three people saved, there will be more and more people that will be saved through you. People after they say, when they, when they receive salvation and then become the disciples, well, people, God will, will work powerfully. However, even though he was the one of the uh, disciples of Jesus, when he his heart was in in money and greed, God could not work. Now Judas, he couldn't use all that money. He went, fell into destruction. Even now, God leads you, and also. God tries to drag you along to destruction and curse. So if you look toward God, you will become amazing men of faith. God will lead you and He will glorify you and He will Give His blessings to you and grace. Now, we'll have a moment of prayer personally. <laughs> 